So you also, I think in 20, I was reading somewhere that you were also um, a city commissioner for Carson. Yes. Um, yes, I'm actually uh, a city commissioner for public relations in the city okay. of Carson. Okay. Uh, and when I moved here and I said, um, now that I'm no longer resident in Carson, should I resign? <laughs> the mayor and the city clerk said, no. Yeah. Uh, or as far as you still own a business in Carson mm -hmm. and um, uh, you own a business in Carson, that qualifies you. I yeah. own a home in Carson. I still own my home in Carson. Okay. So that, that qualifies me to still sit. So okay. I'm actually still serving as city commissioner. Okay. And um, what city commissioners do is to help city council articulate policy. Okay. And also be the bridge between the city council, the city government and the people okay so if they want to do anything talk to the african community yeah. they'll, uh, they talk to me and say mm -hmm. what's going on and all and in fact this year for the first time we are putting together a nigerian parade mm. uh at the city of castle for nigerians uh, i believe this is a 40, 59th Mm. Independent anniversary. It's okay. going to happen on September the thirtieth. Okay. It's going to be at the City of Carson Veterans Memorial Park, and I'm involved in all that. Oh. Yeah. Very nice. So you wear so many hats, right? You're a publisher. You're a realtor. You serve in the City of Carson. Uh, yes. And you're a father. Ah. How do you get to <laughs> and a husband, by the way, a very good husband. Uh, <laughs> so how do you get time to do all this? You, you know what? Keeping busy well keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> <Does it always>? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I joke that keeping busy keeps me out of trouble. Yeah. I don't have time for, I don't have time to mess around. I don't. I yeah. I wish I could have extra days out of 24 hours, but <laughs> God will not grant me. God cannot grant anybody that. that so yeah. my day is packed with things that to is, do, yeah. productive things to do. So I that's why sometimes if somebody calls me on the phone and wants to start a long story that doesn't have a bottom line. Mm -hmm. I politely excuse myself yeah. because I believe that time should be used for something productive. productive. And there's a lot of things I can, I keep pushing work forward because there's a lot to do. Mm -hmm. I keep pushing work forward. Mm -hmm. And now, I, I, if sometimes again, I'm sorry, but when some people bring things that don't really add up to me, I politely decline because if I don't see an intrinsic value of yeah. that, to the service of God and humanity, mm -hmm. I politely decline because I don't want to put my name to things that won't edify God and yeah. help the community. So, uh, no more mundane stuff and no, crazy stuff. No, no, no. <laughs> in, in a summary, keeping busy yeah. keeps me out of trouble. I, I, I want, I, I just keep busy. Yeah. So, but again, I'm mindful yes. of the fact that you have to have a family that you can relate to. Yes. You don't want to do all that and come around and you don't have a family exactly, again. Exactly. Exactly. So, so, from about Saturday, mm -hmm. I usually shut down work okay. and have time. I, I have a young family. Yeah. I have a... How many kids do you have? I have three kids. Okay. I have a 13-year-old boy who's going to turn 14 okay. uh, on young. October 31st. Yeah. He's starting... A, um, he just started high school this year. Okay. So it's, uh, turn 14 on October yeah. 14. I have an 8-year-old girl okay. uh, who is in third grade. And I have um, uh, a 5-year-old who's actually the biggest biggest mouth in this house okay okay <laughs> she's five, a kid i got to... five, five going on to 15. <laughs> <laughs> so you got your work cut out for you because yeah. they're still very young yeah they are yeah they are, they are so yeah so i'm mindful of that so in doing all this and keeping all this busy yeah i know i have a family i have to cater to and i have a loving wife you know who who, who, who loves me despite all and uh, i also have to cater to her needs to yes. her needs of being together with uh, uh, a husband so yes. i make sure that i balance that time right, right. there's something i do that uh, i'll comment to anybody to do okay if um those like i said saturdays i usually shut down work and nothing happens mm -hmm. work wise till mm -hmm. monday okay and i do something uh, that i think is really nice and my wife appreciates that mm -hmm. when i'm leaving the house with her saturday evenings to go out to have parties or Usually, sometimes we'll go out on one-on-one -on -one hangar, take her to a nice restaurant yeah. or a mm -hmm. nice hangar place. I leave my phone. I don't take my phone. Hmm. I You're don't take my phone. You're a brave man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't take my phone. Till, no selfies. No. I don't no take my phone till about Monday. And, and people ask me, why do you do that? I say, uh, look, because if I, keep, if I 
take this phone along, it will destroy that right. private. You time. want to be present. Yes. God if I take this present. phone around, you know, this phone will keep going off and going off and going off, and I keep I'll have an imp it's an impulsive thing to Yeah. You know, pick so, up your yeah, phone. And yeah. if you do all that, then what's the point of yeah, yeah. I always yeah. laugh when I see like a family gathering and everybody is on their I phone. I don't like that. And they actually take a picture and I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, it, it, do you know I was at a wedding, I won't I won't mention names. I was at a wedding last year in LA and I didn't have my phone. I was with, with my wife. And everybody around the table would do, do selfies, do this, do this. Keep chatting on their phone, and somebody said, "Where's your phone?" I said, "I don't have my phone. It's at home." I said, "Well, how come?" I said, "Because I I, I want to take a break." That's good. You know, That's but good. but so uh, sometimes for me it's my lifeline. <laughs> <laughs> this technology thing. Yeah. But you know why I do that? I do that because anybody who is close to me mm -hmm. and knows me well should know Messi's number. Okay. So if you really want to reach me that period. If you really, really want to reach me, you can call Messi. You can call him. His uh, best half. Yes, uh -huh. uh, you can call Messi. And the my, manager of his life. Yes, my, <laughs> my, my mom does that. You know, sometimes yeah. she wants to reach me those people. She calls and, of course, yeah. my, my wife will give me the phone. Yeah. Talk you know, I was listening to an interview that you did um, and you had said this and it caught my attention. You said, um, loving your wife, regardless of anything, it's not vulnerable. Yeah. It's actually strong. It's strength, yeah. In our culture, we think mm -hmm. that openly expressing love makes you weak. Yes. It does not. Okay. It makes you strong. I, so listen up, think. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think openly expressing love makes you weak in any way. Yeah. Because you, the biggest investor in your life is your wife. Okay. The, the, your biggest cheerleader is your wife. Okay. Your biggest supporter is supposed to be your wife. Okay. Your wife doesn't have any agenda that you do not succeed. A loving wife doesn't have that agenda. Yes. If you truly have a wife at your corner, her dream and her prayers is that you become bigger and more successful in every way. Not success is not in terms of money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Success is something bigger than material position. Mm -hmm. So the truth is that your wife is your best partner and your best cheerleader and your best supporter. So I don't see... Any reason why I shouldn't love my wife openly and love her truly, not just for show. Love her truly because she's supposed to be the best friend that you have. So right. is it, I, is the best part of you. Yeah, it's the best part of you. So yeah. I don't see, I don't know, sometimes in our culture, we want to hold back. Yeah. You know, want to hold back, we think is it makes you weak uh, if, yeah. if you if love, you your, love wife. your wife. No, I don't think so. No. I don't think so. So, so or maybe they're faking it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think your wife feels the same about you because I remember interviewing her last time, and she was just singing you praises. And I'm like, well, I, I said, Mercy, you know, you're the reason for this success because yeah. you know how, what they say behind every successful man is a woman, a strong yeah. woman, actually. Yeah, right you way. know, you know, so, somebody <laughs> told me yeah. that about a very well-respected mm -hmm. woman in the community mm -hmm. told me. And I thought about it, and it is largely very true. Yes. Do you know, I'm not worried that sometimes I go for meetings that stretch, yeah. uh, and my, my wife will not call and be busting my phone, and what exactly are you doing? How can you still be meeting at 9 in the evening? Because she knows, she has the confidence that I'm trust. there. Yeah. And she trusts the fact mm -hmm. that I'm there taking care of business. Yes. And she knows that whatever I tell her is the truth. And I think that's part exactly, of it. Exactly, because you haven't given her that reason, reason to doubt. To doubt. Yes. Because that's what sometimes men don't get. If you give your wife a reason to doubt you, then she will continue to doubt. To doubt you, yes. You know, and it's good for you to build up that trust and never take it down. That's because true. it's hard to rebuild. That's it. true. Yeah. So, so you see, part of part of my um, part of the things that keep me in check is whatever I cannot disclose to my wife, I don't get involved in. Right, right. You know, uh, whatever relationship I cannot own up to my wife, I don't get involved in. Actually, that's the advice my my mom always <laughs> says, and I will say this. I don't even know how it translates. He said, but it's kind of like whatever you don't want my husband to know, no, don't, don't tell, tell me. me. Yes. So I grew up like that. So yes. if you don't want my husband to know, don't tell, don't me. tell me. But my husband also swears to secrecy. <laughs> so because I work in an environment where I can also get information on stocks yes. and all, I'll say, okay, 
but you cannot tell you anybody. You cannot tell anybody. Yeah. So, and, so, a, and a <laughs> husband that loves and respects yeah. you will keep that. Will keep and I know that. your husband, you know, yes, yes, thorough yes. professional, yes, yes, high achiever. Yes. I know, I know he will keep it that yeah, way because yeah. he holds several confidences. So, yes, 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 yes. So you've talked about your family. You talked about your wife, your loving wife, the children, and all of that. And we're looking at this fifty years. And we're looking up to the future, the next 50 years. You talked about your legacy. Paint a picture of what Chicken Wake's legacy would look like. Or what you want people when they think about Chicken Wake. Maybe 50 years from now, when you're 100 years, or when you're gone. What do you want people to know and remember about Chicken Wake? Uh, it's, uh, it's tough to write a eulogy at 50 because I want to live a long life but I, 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 I'll, I'll try no you will still be alive it's just like Bill Gates right when we think about Bill Gates yes. we think about his like yes. so yeah yes, I, I'll, I'll try see you're painting a picture yes you're going to be alive uh, at 100 it, I said uh, when you're alive uh, at 100 uh, I have to be useful at 100 to be you alive. will be you will be so you see our story is a difficult one and um I want from the corner of what I'm doing, the body of work I'm doing, right. to help tell a different story of the African situation before I leave. Okay. Especially in the West. Our story as blacks and Africans is a difficult one. And um, you look back home from where we come and there's so much work to be done, mm -hmm. so much need, so much want. So much underdevelopment, so much poverty. And even right here in the West where we are, where we live, mm -hmm. the story about Africa and Africans is not the very best uh, stereotype. They paint us in dark colors. Yeah, they see Africa from the perspective of failed government, poverty and disease and non-achievers. Mm -hmm. um, I know I cannot do everything. Yes. But I want to join forces with like minds like Noni here, uh, who is changing the perspective and changing the story in our little way to mm -hmm. redefine the way the world views Africa and African before I move on. Um, and we are gradually getting there. For example, my 50th is a celebration that's going to draw people from across the spectrum uh, of the even larger American community. To come and hear our stories and come and hear our success stories. Last year, increasingly, we are getting people from outside of our community come to the Life and Time Fiesta. And in fact, a couple of things that we're doing. Um, some people from Hollywood approached uh, me in the last two weeks, okay. talking about uh, making movies that will tell the African story in a better light. You know, movies that will dispel those negative stereotypes mm -hmm. and tell our story. From our own perspective. Exactly. So, I know that I'm just one person. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not going to live here forever. Mm -hmm. But we want to hand over to younger people who are going to carry this mantle and move on with it. Uh, for example, we just started a networking, uh, network called Afri Connections that is primarily tailored to networking amongst our youth here in the diaspora and back home. Uh, we're going to launch that again in the next quarter. Okay. Uh, it's in the works. Um, so these are all the things we're doing. We know that we're not going to do all of this work even before we move on. Right. right. We're going to pass it on to the younger generation, right. the millennials, yeah. who are also going to pass it on to their uh, new children. Yes, yes. But like I, like, like I said at the beginning, if a country of goat headers... Falcon Games for uh, uh, people. He's talking about Dubai. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Camel Rearers could transform practically in a period of 25 mm -hmm. years. I believe we cannot lose hope on Africa turning around. I know we have the intellectual capacity. We know we have the human resources. Right. We even know we have the natural resources. But for some reason, we have lacked the leadership to do that. So we're going to be supportive of leadership back in Africa. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep teaching our young people to go beyond the mundane and strive for bigger things. That's right. And I believe at the end of the day, we should be good. So in summary, I want to contribute the best I can in my little way from my own uh, body of work 
to redefine the African story before I leave. Um, of course, uh, I'm in Life and Times. Uh, Life and Times is media. Yes. And media is all about telling stories. So yes. I'll use that medium as much as I can yes. to retell the story before I move on. You're doing a, an incredible job telling those stories. And that's kind of what we talked about when we started Black Pumps TV. Mm. We said, let's tell our stories ourselves. Yeah, ourselves you know? correct. So you're doing an incredible job doing that. And, uh, you know, the um, Fiesta is always good. We look forward to attending. Yes. This year is going to be spectacular Amen. because it's uh, combined with your birthday. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. So Life and Times, you now you've taglined it, the new face of Africa. So I understand why that new tagline, yes. the new face of Africa. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So before we round up this interview, um, you've had some obstacles in your life and you overcame them. And I know because I follow you that you kind of did that, that it's God. God did all that. It's God's faithfulness. And we all get that. God is always faithful mm -hmm. and he's been a blessing in your life. But what would you tell someone who is going through hardship, through those obstacles? I look at you from making $3.50 an hour, mm -hmm. an hour mm -hmm. to living in Palos Verdes and having the view of the ocean. My friend, that is the American dream. Uh, is God's faithfulness. So it is God's faithfulness. <laughs> yeah, so what, I, 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 I'll bring it down to simple things. Yes, okay. yeah. So where would you advise someone who is out there struggling or having some obstacles in life? Yes. You know, um, like I keep saying, I don't think I work harder than anybody. I know I work hard, but there are some people who work three times harder than I do. It's working smart. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so the Bible says that the race does not belong to the swift, nor the strong, nor the fast, but to whom God showed mercy. Mm -hmm. Again, having said that, I will immediately add that God helps those who help themselves. Right. Uh, my faith without works. Yes, right? is dead completely. So my thing is, my advice is set your goals and set your priorities right. From the very beginning. And I'm doing a lot of mentoring in the last two, three years. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of young people who gravitate to me. They want to talk to me. Yeah. They call me from all over the country. They even call me from Nigeria. They want to hear me talk to them and advise them because they think I have worked hard and God has blessed me to mm -hmm. be able to uh, be a person they can look up to and seek advice from. Right. And I keep telling people, I was telling one yesterday, I said, look, you have to define your goals right. Don't chase shadows in life. Mm -hmm. Your goals have to be concrete, achievable, and attainable. That's right. And they have to be incremental. Yes. You can't go from making zero dollars to making one million dollars in in two days. Yes. It's not going to happen unless you commit fraud. And if you do commit fraud, you're probably going to end up in jail. You'll be caught. Four years from now. <laughs> it will happen. So no true. question. Yeah. This is a country of laws. They will catch yeah. up with you. Yeah. So set goals that are smart incremental and achievable. achievable and keep set, put a timeline to put it. a timeline to it define Smart your goals things. from short medium and long term mm -hmm. and let them be incremental and if you have to go to school go to school if you have to acquire a new skill acquire a new skill if you have to be smart about acquiring credit to do the work you need to do do that but let those be incremental steps as you go along, you know, you can't mm -hmm. go from nothing to something. You have to start building incrementally. So it's been my story. Um, uh, $3.50 $3 an hour 21 years ago. And, uh, and helping her mom raise the other kids. Helping my mom raise my siblings. Yeah. And now being able amazing. to own a business that uh, pays my bills and puts food on the uh, table of my family. And I, I keep telling people, I can't say I've arrived, no. That's a big word. That's not it. But uh, I want to still be thankful way. to God to where he has brought me. And yes. I'm believing him for even greater heights. Yeah, That's awesome. So they've heard that. So let me ask you a trick question. Um, if you were to change anything in your past life, in the past 50, yeah. because we're now looking on to 50, which is going to be smooth sailing, yeah. what would that be? Oh, tough one. Um... It's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> Change anything. Um, 
I think if I had time, if if I had an opportunity, I would love to be at my father's funeral. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the opportunity because I couldn't even leave. I wanted mm -hmm. to come back home. My mom said, come back home, who's going to raise this children? But I say in America, we can't afford for you to come back. I was very close to my dad and his loss devastated me. If I had a chance, I would want to, wanted to be there. Then um, I would have wanted to start a couple of things a little bit earlier than I, I, I started them. Um, like I said at the beginning, um, I was way too playful and way too rascally when I was um, in uh, secondary school. He was in pirates. <laughs> <laughs> I have to keep saying I'm that. A, my mother prayed me out of all of that. Thank God yeah. for mothers. <laughs> my mother prayed me out of all of that. We we're too rascally. You know, yeah. we, I'll go to Paris and I'll get drunk. I stopped drinking about 14 years ago, by the way. Uh -oh. I, 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 I went just cold talking. I'm like, what is this? I need to stop. Yeah, so we so played too much and we took a lot of stupid risks. Uh, growing up, I I think I should have started a bunch of the things I did in my uh, late teens or early twenties. But God is still faithful. God is faithful. He hasn't yeah. finished with you. Yes. Yet. Yeah. So, but you know, I mean, that you have to be kids. Okay. We yeah. all made mistakes, right? Yeah, we all yes. had all those faults. That, the, yeah. the beauty of it is that you came out of it. It's yes, not about I, how many times. Yes. It's how many times you got out. And I caught myself early. Yeah. You know, yeah. the I keep saying even. I hear some of my friends who, who were in the fraternity with, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not saying there's there's nothing wrong. I'm not condemning anybody. Absolutely not. That's not the point I'm making. But some of my friends in and out of those, that fraternity that we're in, um, the surprising thing is that they still think like they are still in their teens. Hmm. They call me up and say, oh, do you want to come? I'm not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with drinking, but life should be bigger and more focused yeah. than well, well, at, your, at, your, at your 50th year, yeah, yes. you should know a little bit better. Yes, uh, yes, yes. That's what I think. So, so this has been an awesome thing, but so let me ask you, and it's another trick question. So if they play like a gag grill, you know, like those moments when people play your life and they'll just laugh, what would those be? Those times they look at you can just like bust out laughing. <laughs> uh, a couple of times, people don't exactly know where I'm going. You know, even with life and time, it was, I heard jokes about it okay. when we started. So um, people didn't know exactly where we were going and didn't know what the dreams are uh, again these are people that i feel it <laughs> yeah people who will come and sit down with you and vision. ask you questions exactly what you're doing they yes. think oh this man is chasing shadows yes. even people who are close to me yeah yeah you know so um i've gotten a lot of that but thank god god has proven them wrong uh, so what, yeah we'll, we'll keep clipping it we'll clip the first one they say oh fiesta <laughs> we'll keep another one we say oh dubai i know, you know? Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it's yeah. been an amazing, it's an amazing ride. God, God, um, God has proven them wrong, you know, to, yeah. and to him be the glory. Yes. And um, so the things I'm talking about doing and wishing that God will bless me to do, again, for some people, it's like far-fetched. But look, we serve a God of impossibilities, and I know that. I know, I, I know that. I yeah, know that so. too. Thank you so much. This has been an amazing time. Um, we enjoy talking to you, and I'll be the first to tell you that the next fifty years is going to be smooth sailing. Man, I wish you Man. all the best and continue to give back to the society. We all appreciate you from the Igbo, the Nigerian, the African, the American community in Los Angeles. Thank you so much. Thank you, Noni. And you're also truly an inspiration. I remember talking to you about Black Pump some years ago. And I, it's amazing where uh, God is taking this to. And I told you, and I know it is going to happen very, very soon, that you're going to go in mainstream television. Because we need our voices to be heard. Yes. We need to redefine our stories. We don't want people to keep... Look at you. I'm one of a very, very successful children, a doctor, a lawyer in the making, a lawyer... Um, you know, are you uh, a well-renowned CPO, <laughs> CPA, you're, uh, 
yes. television producer and all of that. Yeah. These are stories that they don't like telling about us. Yes, yes, know, so yes. We're changing I, it. I also want to thank you for what you do too. You do a lot. And this is a level of love I know that. Yeah. You know, me and you know that yes. publishing, niche minority publishing is level of love. Yes. yes. But we have to keep doing it. We have it. to keep doing it. Thank you for your, all your encouragement. Amen. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. <sighs> and you've heard everything. So go out there and like my children will say, dominate. Yes. <laughs>